Welcome to the Visionaries Podcast, sponsored by Alchemy. I'm your host, Jim Maroos. The Visionaries Podcast shines a light on the financial institutions at the cutting edge of digital transformation, providing you with the tips and tricks to elevate your digital game, no matter what size your organization is. Viridian Credit Union has cemented its reputation as an innovator by being one of the first to adopt the new FedNow real-time payments rail. Joining us today are Colin Egan, Real-Time Payments Administrator, and Amy Faley, Manager of ACH at Viridian. They will be discussing their journey to faster payments. We'll explore Viridian's motivations, implementation, and lessons learned launching FedNow to stay ahead of the digital transformation curve. Viridian Credit Union was founded in 1934 in Waterloo, Iowa, and is reaping the benefits of being an early FedNow adopter. With their innovative technology partnership powering fast payments, Viridian is positioned at the vanguard of the digital transformation revolution. So, Amy and Colin, before we discuss your organization's implementation of FedNow, can you share a little bit about your careers at Viridian? Uh, let's start with you, Amy. Thank you, Jim. Um, well, I've worked here at Viridian Credit Union for 17 years now. I am currently the manager of our ACH department, which also handles faster payments, so FedNow and real-time payments um, with TCH. I have gone through a wide variety of, of, I guess, jobs or positions here at Viridian to get to where I am today, starting at a branch, going into our member contact center, working with our, our e-team for our digital banking, and then moving into fraud, and then finally into the ACH department. So it's been a, it's been a wild ride here at Viridian Credit Union. How about you, Colin? I would say that my journey with Viridian has been very similar to Amy and honestly, a lot of the people that work at the company here today. Uh, I started off on the front line as a teller here, been with the company about eight years and worked through my way through other various positions up through the consumer side where I was a loan officer and then assisted with a couple of core conversions that we had working through uh, the company itself and then actually landed in uh, this position as it was created once we decided, decided to move into the kind of faster payment space. So sticking with that for a second, Colin, can you provide some background on Viridian Credit Union and what led you to decide to implement real-time payments? Yeah, the real big driver for us initially was we were approached by some of our larger uh, originating clients that kind of wanted to see this uh, feature enabled for you know their customers to be able to send these faster payments through. So that was kind of the original like driver for us as a financial institution. Now, along with that comes, you know, a bunch of use cases that we saw we to be able to use internally for us. But originally, it was those big originators that had approached us that were kind of business clients for Viridian that we saw a lot of value in, you know, wanting to keep those um, in-house with us and have those transactions flowing through Viridian. So it's interesting, Amy, in our pre-call, I discussed a little bit about the fact that I was at a meeting with a lot of very large financial institutions, and it was asked how many of you are going to be implementing Fed now or real-time payments right away, and, and all of them hesitated. I was surprised by that, being a banker and thinking that you know the big banks are on top of this stuff, and, and a lot of them gave the reason being they just wanted to see how it worked out, see if consumers really demanded it, seeing what the financials were, all these really interesting old school type discussions. And it really surprised me when you're looking at what you're trying to do for your members, what are the main benefits that you are aiming to achieve for your members with real time payments? I think the main thing we're trying to enable for the members is, you know, we've heard the demand for you know, the faster payments to be able to move money quicker from point A to point B on there. You know, we're getting those in surveys and we're hearing that in discussions that we're getting back and with feedback from, you know, our members and from our business clients as well. So, you know, looking across the board, I think that's where faster payments are honestly headed. We're going to be using them more frequently. It's kind of the future and the first biggest update to kind of the payment system. And I mean, 40 years from what we're looking at from like traditional ACH on there. So really taking that feedback that we get from our members and, you know, enabling them to have us be a trusted financial partner to, you know, listen to their needs and be able to service what they're asking from us. And 
it was kind of a no brainer once we saw that with what the faster payment networks are going to enable us to do for them. So Amy, when you looked at different real-time payment partners, how did you ultimately determine who you wanted to partner with to implement this solution? Yeah, we kind of went across the board. Um, we looked at about five or six different potentials, um, including building to the platform ourselves. And you know, we looked at clients that we use today for other, or va- vendors, I'm sorry, that we use for today for other services that had this ability. So it was first, okay, we we do business with, with these vendors, let's talk to them. Um, there's this specific vendor that's the leader in the industry for TCH for the Clearinghouse Network. So let's look at them. You know, let's look at somebody who's more credit union oriented. Um, so that's really, we kind of just looked across the board and tried to tried to see, okay, you know, the leaders, who we use, people specific to credit unions. And then ultimately, we, we took everything that we learned from each of those vendors and essentially just put it all together in a sheet that we could compare. So we, we, we made real sure to, to put down the things that we wanted out of real-time payments or faster payments, right? So what are, what is our end game? What, what use cases do we want? What are we willing to spend? What, you know, how, how fast this, the speed to market was a huge, huge driver for us. So we, we put that down and we compared those things and that was a huge help to, to determine, you know, what was the business or what was the company that would work best or fit best with Viridian Credit Union? Um, and the company that we went with actually came came at the end of our, our journey. Um, we have a, a CUSO president that works in conjunction with Viridian Credit Union. And that person actually spoke to Alacrity. And Alacrity would be the the business that or the, the vendor that we would end up going with just because they had everything that checked the box for us. They had speed to market. They didn't have a legacy system. They built their system. Um, so they know the ins and outs. They can do, you know, they can, they could do things on the fly that other systems can't do, right? They've got a legacy system. They've got to, they've got to deal with what has been built before them and they have to figure it out. So, you know, there are just a lot of really, really good points that this smaller company compared to everybody else we were looking at was bringing to the table. So it really, really was a, it was a great experience. It was a long experience. It took about a year for us to go through and really do our due diligence and make sure that we had the company that would best fit our needs and our members' needs. You know, you you mentioned something we hear over and over again, that, that organizations are looking at their core providers, the organizations that can do everything, and then they look at other what I call sub providers that specialize, and more and more organizations are finding it to be a much more comfortable space to pick those specialists that can do what they need at speed and at scale, and and will mirror the mission that you're trying to achieve, but also can grow with you and can give you the attention because you know you're not the biggest financial institution in the world and and you have other responsibilities and be able to hand it off to an organization and have them run down the field for you as opposed to you, you having to run with them the entire way is an important deciding point for most organizations but when you look at that and and you look at using a, what I'm going to call an outside partner that is not your core provider how did you sell it to your your team, your management team, your executive team, on actually implementing a solution that was going to cost you more. And in theory, and I underline theory, duplicate something that your core provider says they can do. It it really wasn't wasn't a huge challenge. And and that's just because I I feel like we did do our due diligence. And when we came to the point of, you know, this is our recommendation, we had great points there. And as you mentioned, you know, we, we have a core provider and they, you know, they do have a solution, but ultimately, you know, that solution is, this is it, right? Out of the box, this is it. This is what you get. There's not really much customization there. So you, you get what you get. And, you know, we knew that going in with, you know, some of the vendors that we were looking at. And that's something that for Viridian Credit Union, we, we love to customize things. We love to make sure that things work for our members the way that we would expect them to work and the way that you just 
makes it easier for our members to, you know, use our our systems, right? So it it was really really not a struggle. I think we have a very very open minded um, strategic team and our chiefs. They're very open to you know, what what is best for our members in the credit union not, and not just going with a vendor because we do business with that vendor, right? Or not just going with that vendor because, hey, they're our core system. You know, who can really work with that and who can we who can we trust, right? Because, you know, our core system, if they have a solution, it should work just fine, right? There should be no issues. It should should work through the core, no, no problems. Then you have an outside an outside vendor who doesn't work with that core, maybe it's their first time. And now you have to hope that, right, they can they can API in, they can make sure that this does everything that we want it to do for our members. And we <clears throat> felt with everything that we asked of Alacrity and, you know, and, and the other vendors as well, you know, we just really felt like Alacrity was, you know, was telling us the truth. You know, we, we got a we got to feel that they were being sincere that, you know, we're not just saying we can do this in this amount of time. We're not just saying that we can make this work with your current core or, you know, we can do this, that, or the other. We really truly believed in what they said and they backed everything up. Um, and really it comes down to, for us, this at the same time of having like all the features that we want for our members and for our business partners, we also Again, as you mentioned, we want our visions to align. We want to be able to grow. We don't want to be, we don't always want to be the small fish in the big pond, right? And we don't always want to be the big fish in the small pond. It goes both ways. But in in this case, it just made sense. You know, they they had all the right answers. Um, they backed up everything um, with our first first RTP receive with that whole certification process and going through it. They led the charge, just like you said. There wasn't really much we had to do. We just had to kind of sit back and and really let it happen. So you just, I think, having a, a senior team and a chief team that really, really believes in their employees, right? So it's not just, well, we want to go with who we've always gone with because we know. Thank you very much for going through this one year of analysis. Yeah. But we're going to go the but, way we would have gone anyway, yes. Yeah, we, we still, we're going to go this. We want to do this. You know, they're very, very trusting that, you know, we we went down this process and we were very thorough and we were making the best possible decision for the credit union. And I mean, that that decision was one of the better decisions I think that we've made to go with a third party vendor because it's we're we're doing all sorts of business with them now. It's not just in that faster payments realm and we're finding that they they can provide solutions for us that other companies don't want to handle. They don't they don't want to tackle it. They don't want to do it. And they're like, "No, we can we can do this. Let's let's try it. What is it you're looking for? You know, what is it that you need?" So, this has been a great partnership and yeah, I I wouldn't go back and change a thing about that decision. You know, you've said so much about this whole process. Number 1, the commitment of management to do what they believe their employees found would be right. So in a, in a mindset, you're saying they're embracing change. They're looking at the fact that we have to do things differently than we've done them in the past. And we're going to we're going to really rely on our employees to find the best solution. But you're out there finding composable solutions that can be implemented at speed and scale, back to your words, and will continue to evolve as you evolve. Because in today's world, yeah, you may be a small organization today, but you could very quickly with embedded banking and with banking as a service, you could become a very big organization overnight. I mean, literally overnight. And and it's very interesting because it really takes a mindset change. It takes a commitment to find those great composable solutions that provide you the best solutions in a in a category or in an area that you're trying to innovate. So lots of great things to unpack there. But, you know, Colin, you, as much as that sounds all great, in every implementation, there's challenges or roadblocks. What are some of the challenges that you your team faced in deploying real-time payments and how did you overcome them? And maybe they weren't that significant, but I'm sure nothing nothing is when you look back, you go, geez, I would have probably done some things differently. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from a just whole implementation perspective, I mean, I don't want to plug Alacrity too much here, but they really they really did like an awesome job like for us and like really 
they handled a majority of the weight and kind of the work involved in this on there. You know, there's learnings along the way where, you know, all these financials that are looking to join these networks, you know, it kind of feels like we're all on the same even playing field at this point in time as we learn how to implement these new networks. But honestly, Alacrity did most of that, like lifting for us. And we really speed bumps along the way with some connection issues, like with the core, but those are common. You're going to see that when implementing any kind of new payment rail and connecting to from an, from an outside system to the new core itself. But uh, nothing too large that I can really think of off the top of my head, if I'm being honest, like it was, again, we'll just shout out Alacrity for everything that they've done for us and really getting us connected to both of these networks in a very seemingly process. We were there for support. Our core and our web teams were there to, to offer any like help or solutions that would need for some outside perspective on that. But Alacrity was there to basically to kind of hold our hand along the way as we went through this whole entire process. So I guess from a learning perspective, uh, really evaluating like your who your provider is going to be, whether you choose to you know connect directly through this or you go through a third party like we chose to go through when connecting to both these networks. But that's been the one thing that like I would recommend is really evaluating what partner you're looking at and allowing you to put yourself in the position that we're in today. You know, payments is such an important component of the future of digital banking. Um, the reality is. You know, we almost take it for granted. I know I had a situation at my financial institution where I transferred money from within the organization, and yet it didn't take hold until at the end of the day. And I was very surprised that it wasn't an instant within an organization. On the same front, I have the situation where my business bank does not transfer money to my personal bank, both top six banks in the world, in the country doesn't do it seamlessly. I have to write a check to do that seamlessly. And and we we come to, to uh, as a consumer, you come to expect certain things happening in the payment world that kind of relates to what's happening everywhere with Amazon, with Google, with with uh, Uber, and every other interaction we have with, with organizations that are digital. And, and it really all has to come together. So Colin, how does Fed now fit within Viridian's overall digital innovation strategy. We looked at FedNow and the RTP network and with faster payments on there as something that, you know, we're going to utilize outside of just those original use cases that we were approached by with our orig big originators on there. You know, that was kind of like the overarching, okay, this is going to get us there. This is why we want to be in this space. But then looking at everything that's going to kind of involve with that, our internal use cases. Right now, we're currently just on receive with uh, FedNow and with our uh, the RTP with TCH as well. But we're looking at those other possibilities that we want to use internally. You know, the originators and them approaching us is what got us to kind of jumpstart and get to these networks. But then we at Viridian always look down the road, you know, how can we use this internally? Because at the end of the day, we're really looking to benefit our members. Yes, these originators are the ones that, you know, got us here, but how are we going to use this to, you know, listen to what our members are saying, get them to those faster payments and hopefully jump over some of those hurdles that you just talked about there, you know, having to write a check to move money from point A to point B. And I feel like with a lot of the functions of financial institutions, it does seem a little kind of archaic at times, like how you want to move things like money here and there. And people get stuck in those ways of like doing things slower or kind of the tedious process of those workarounds on there. So we look at these networks as a possibility to, you know, move past those hurdles, get that money moving where it needs to go quicker for our members and being able to solve those needs that we're hearing through the surveys that we're seeing in the digital spaces today. And just like you said, everything is, we're living in an instant world and we want that instant gratification. And we want to know that money is moving from point A to point B in the safest and quickest way possible. And, you know, looking at both these networks and what they're going to provide for our members and for us as an organization, it just made sense for us to, you know, be an early adopter of these and have these be a big part of our organizational structure moving forward. So, so Amy, in the, on the same light, do you see things like real-time payments and, and what you've done with Fed now as being just one of many different innovations that you're trying to implement at Viridian around 
digital transformation? I mean, what other things are going on, maybe even outside your area of expertise? What other things are going on at Viridian that you would consider to be really moving forward at speed and scale as trying to keep up with your members' recognition of what's possible now in a digital world? It hits company, you know, company-wide. So we we recently just had a kind of a conversion, not really kind of a conversion, it was a conversion, for our digital banking platform to be, you know, a, have a connection to the core via API. So as, you know, as you say, like, you know, making things go faster, it's not just about money movement, right? It's also about what you can see and what's hitting your account at the same token so that you always know how much money you have in your account at a given time. So instead of posting things later in the day, you know, we're, we're an immediate institution, meaning that when we get a file, it's posting. Um, we recently adopted early release of deposits. So we'll release those two days, two business days prior to the effective date. Um, well, up to two days if we get it, we get it ahead of time. So really it's an initiative company-wide to make sure that our members know what they have in their account at any given time, that they have the ability to move funds even if it's outside of our institution, where right now we're really pushing for deposits, right? Like we want we want that money to come in and, and get in there. We have some great competitive CD rates right now, you know, so we're really pushing for that. But it doesn't stop us from, you know, wanting our members to be able to move their money freely, even if that means moving their money out of Viridian to another financial institution. So, you know, you, you talk about writing a check to move money from one bank to another. And, you know, we're, we have members on these surveys, as Colin mentioned, that are stating, hey, this ACH one to two business days isn't fast enough. We want this to go even faster, you know, and, you know, we've got same day ACH running, you know, obviously wires are out there, but those are clunky and expensive. So, you know, nobody really wants to spend an hour sending a wire, right? Um, so just giving our members and paying for it and both ways, right? Receiving and sending, you know, so, so how do we, how do we make these services available to our members at low and no cost so that they can feel free to move these funds and, you know, kind of have those experiences that they're getting with Cash App, that they're getting with Venmo, you know, those may not be settling in real time all the time, but they are moving that money in real time. So essentially you're seeing it. So just really trying to, you know, really hang with the times and make sure that, you know, our members have some of these, you know, cutting edge systems, these cutting edge services to allow them to have that ability to move funds without, without charging them for it. Right. So that's, that's the other big thing is, you know, giving these services without, okay, now we'll give you the free ACH, but you're going to have to pay $5 to make this money go in this, in these seconds. Right. No, we don't, we don't want to do that. We, we want this to be a very like open market so that, you know, we can, you know, we're using these services and we hope that other financial institutions are going to hop on now and use those services, especially with Fed now. It just seems like you're going to catch more of those smaller financial institutions because you already have Fed services. So it, it's kind of like an easier jump. So what advice, Amy, would you give to other credit unions considering rolling out real-time payments? What, what have you learned that you say, Boy, this is, I, I wish I had known this back when I started this process. I think the biggest thing is, is keep track of your use cases and always be on the lookout for what could, what could better your, your financial institution. You know, what, you know, this isn't always just for your, for your members directly for them to move money back and forth, but it's also for you to use services such as, you know, things we're looking at like closing costs or payoffs, right? We have a huge indirect, um, lender market. So being able to pay these things off quickly, closing costs for mortgage loans, like we we have lots of loans that we service. So just being able to use that internally to move that money faster and to make these processes even even better for our members and even for you know the the recipients, right? So that that dealership or that other mortgage or that person you're buying the house from, right? Like moving these funds quicker and and getting these processes done much faster. The the one thing I wish I would have known would have been just make sure that you know your your path to get there, right? So if if we have 
originators who are looking to use this service for their clients, they're not going to use our digital banking platform to do that, but our general membership would. So knowing how you're going to get there, you know, really thinking of that beforehand of that understanding, because again, how our members are getting there is not the same as how our business partners are getting there. Those are two separate things. And it is different than ACH, right? Because it's not a file. These are things that are going in real time. Like I decide in this moment that I want to send money to Colin and I do it, you know, and there it is. He's got the money versus, you know, let's, let's have, you know, your client sends a file to you, you send it to us, we upload it to the Fed. Real easy stuff, right? And it's, you know, we have to get it there by a certain time if we want it to make same day ACH, but, you know, real time payments and Fed now, those are flowing all the time. So you can't, you can't put a stopper on it. So understand how you're going to get there and how you're going to truly keep this as a faster payments rail and not, you know, the whole accept without posting and kind of like these lag times of, of being able to post these funds as you receive them, you know, truly keep this, you know, within seconds, you know, don't, don't make it clunky, make it, make it work, but understanding your use cases again and, and understanding how you're going to get there. Great point. You know, it seems logical. You know, we look at a GPS system. You got to put in where you're going and to be able to get there, but, it, but there's so many elements to it. I think, you, you know, you've, been, you've educated me during this, this podcast already around, you know, this stuff touches everything else. But as you said, you know, the consumer and the businesses and everybody else are used to things being done differently now. I mean, I, my son calls and says, or he texts me and he says, uh, hey, I need money sent to me for something I'm doing with a, a, a golf tournament that uh, is being done for charity. And, and I send it immediately via Venmo and he can use it immediately the way he uses it. What's interesting is we touch so many things that are instant. To have things not instant now is, is an aberration. And, and, We've got to look at it from the perspective of the member and the customer as well. You know, Colin, from that perspective, how do you inform your members that they now have instant payments? Yeah, absolutely. We're partnering with our marketing team to definitely get that information out to our members and make that widely known to them. Uh, right now, with us just being on receive with both uh, TCH's RTP and with the Fed now, I think a lot of our members are just kind of noticing the deposits hitting their accounts a little bit quicker wherever they're coming from that funding source. Now we do plan to open up the send capability through our online banking platform to our members here in the next coming year. And when hopefully, and when that uh, time does come with that, we'll definitely partner with our marketing team to get that information out to make sure that they know that this is an option within the online banking uh, portal. Now we're working directly kind of with Alchemy on that and you know testing that capabilities as we speak right now, working through some various items on there. But I think once our members, like they're used to being able to do the transfers through their platform today, whether that's internal or setting up that external account on there, they'll see the option once it's implemented into the digital banking platform to you know, be able to send that instantaneously on there. And with, you know, connecting to both the, all the faster payments networks and having those different rails available, we want to kind of look at like almost like the FedEx model where, you know, you can get your money from point A to point B and here are the different options that you can look at on there. So having a connection to all these different rails and really opening it up for the members to kind of be able to choose, you know, which route do they want to take, how they want to get their money there and, you know, what's going to be the fastest and most cost efficient way for the individual to send that money and just giving them the option on there, which is really why being connected to both networks, I think is really important because we want to be able to cast a wide net across, you know, all domestic like connections that we can get our money from point A to point B for our members. You know, it's interesting. We, we sometimes take for granted that members and customers are going to know what we've done, but if we don't promote it, 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 it it doesn't get known. And, and in just the same sense, members, if you tell them about this, they will then in some point or time compare it to other organizations and find out that it's not something that's universal. You know, you, you've got to, you only have this lead for so long and to take advantage of it and to show the members the benefits, it's just as important as implementing it. So 
So, Amy, you know, this isn't the only thing happening in the payment space or in the innovative digital banking space. What excites you about the future? Yeah, just the fact that they're making changes in payments that, again, Colin mentioned, we haven't seen in decades, right? You know, so we're we're actually seeing a lot of a lot of change, even with trying to, you know, regulate or, or kind of across the board with the ISO 20022 format, right? So we're seeing that hit wires, we're seeing that for RTP for FedNow, and they're looking at that for ACH, you know, so really just trying to, you know, even if it is a different payment, still make it very, very synonymous across payments, right? So we're using the same language to send these payments, which just makes things a little bit easier across the board. So it's exciting to me to see that, you know, not only are we adding like these faster payment rails, but we're also seeing other things with payments that are, that are just, you know, they make, they make sense, right? So, you know, Europe is is quite a quite a bit ahead of us when it comes to things like this, but they also make make it to where their financial institutions have to adopt these things, right? Where in the United States we don't do that. Like we have this here, we would love for you to adopt it, but you don't have to. You know, whereas in Europe it's like if you're a financial institution, you must adopt this. You know, and we're seeing that with with the light, with the messaging format with the ISO 20022. You know, that's that's a huge thing. So, it's just exciting that anything is really changing when we haven't seen much change and that it's not just, you know, an external it's, it's, you know, NACHA is looking at, you know, making changes for ACH, right? So we're seeing all these faster payments for RTP fed now. Well, that's driving change into ACH. So at what point is ACH seven days a week, 365, right? You know, it's, it just seems like a matter of time that the fed, in general, becomes 24 hours for all of these payment rails. So for me, that's that's exciting. Is what's really to come? What what is faster payments driving across the industry? Yeah, again, to get that back to what consumers expect. I, I did a transfer of funds on Friday and realized that the I well, I'm going to get access to some of it immediately. The other part wasn't going to happen until Tuesday, and all of a sudden I go. I guess that's because of the weekend, but it, it's crazy because you sit here and go, it, it's not like the payments world stops on weekends. <laughs> it's just the financial institutions do or the, the process does. And it's very interesting. You know, Colin, as a final question, when you look at Viridian overall, what do you see that's exciting outside the payments area that you're innovating with? What's, what's Viridian up to? What's Viridian up to? I think like with this, you know, switch to like the faster payments and what we're looking on there, it's it's part of our overall goal. And what we're looking at is like m our member service and really getting back to that like member service thing. You know, we we're doing this to service the needs of our members like on there and hearing what they're actually like talking about. But outside of other things that, that we're up to, I think just the a trip back to you know, we've grown quite a bit over here in the last couple of years. We're adding multiple branch locations, you know, expanding into Minnesota and like in the Nebraska areas as well. And I mean, I've only been with the company eight years and I can still remember the only having Iowa locations here. And that's only eight years ago that I've been with Viridian. So knowing that we are expanding, but keeping that mindset of, and this is something that's always been said to me and what I've learned, you know, going through my multiple positions is we're here to serve our members. They're what makes us like what we are today and kind of a trip back to that. And there's been an organizational push back to that to really be here to service the needs of our members and really have that customer service and that member facing you know, you can always call us and you're talking to somebody on the phone. You're not going through an automated system. You can go into the branches and having our employees, you know, go above and beyond and really make those uh, situations special for our members and make them still feel like they're those original John Deere credit union members that we had back in the day. So I think a trip back to that is what we are really pushing right now at Verdian. And, you know, with these faster payments networks and some other initiatives that we have to really service those needs that are kind of in place right now, I think that's where we are going back to while still maintaining our stances and expanding financial institution. You know, it's a great point. You look at Verini, you look at a lot of other financial institutions. It's the mindset of saying, how can we take friction? How can we take time out of the equation, make it so that 
it's easier for our members. And it's a mindset that says we're going to touch everything and say, okay, digital account opening it isn't simply the ability to do it digitally. It's the ability to do it digitally fast and easy. And, it, and it's a mindset. And, it, you know, your organization is a great example of an organization that says, you know what? We're going to put the effort in to serve our members in a way that they expect based on everything else going on in their lives right now. Thank you so much, both of you, for being on the Visionary Podcast today. It's been great talking to you. Great finding out more about what you're doing and how you're doing it and your passion for payments. You know, as I mentioned before the podcast, I haven't touched upon the payments world as much as we probably should. And it's not like it's a dead dead area. It's extraordinarily active. And it's an area where more often than not, consumers are disappointed that they can't do things as fast as they want. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks for having us, Jim. Yes, thank you. Thanks for listening to the Visionaries podcast. We hope you enjoyed our deep dive into all the tips and tricks you can use to elevate your digital game. If you enjoyed today's episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post it on social media, or leave just a thumbs up and a comment. This has been a production of Evergreen Podcast. A special thank you to our senior producer, Leah Haslidge, audio engineer, Will Pritz, and video engineer, Chris Fafalius. I'm your host, Jim Roos. Until next time, remember, getting the friction out of every process benefits your customers and members every day.